expanding a sentence using because to provide a reason. And we see we have the text on the left. Notice that we can scroll through it, and I will do that just so you can get a sense of its length and its, its format as well. Okay, and we have our directions. Use information from the text to finish the sentence. Put the information in your own words. Have to use information from the text. We can't add our own information, and we need to put things in our own words. We, we can't pull from the text or plagiarize or use quotes. So our STEM is feeding cow see we can reduce the impact cow burps have on the environment because. So let's say I write, they cause global warming. Now, what I've done here is I've incorrectly focused on the impact of cow burps, right? Cow burps have an effect on global warming. But this sentence, the subject is actually about feeding cows seaweed. So let's see what happens, get feedback. Clear your response and try again. How does feeding cows seaweed reduce the impact their burps have on the environment? Check that your response only uses information from the text. So what's happened here, right, as I said, is I'm really quite off, off track. And so my the feedback is going to direct me basically to start over, right? They don't want me to continue going in a direction that's just going to be more confusing for me. So I'm starting over and I have a question that helps me to, to think more about what this STEM is asking me to write about. I also have noticed here a hint. And what this hint does is it explains for me how because functions, right? That because joins ideas, it tells uh, why what happened in the first part of the stem um, happened or why it's true. And I also get a model that's annotated as well. So this is uh, something that you'll see throughout the tool when students are struggling to kind of just basically complete the stem, they might get this hint about how that conjunction functions. So I'll go back here and I'll realize, okay, I need to focus on the impact of those, uh, of feeding cows seaweed. And I'll revise and write, because it can decrease the methane they produce. I'll click get feedback. It's true that cows release less methane when they eat seaweed. Now be more specific. How much does the methane decrease? So you see here uh, something that's really a hallmark of this tool, which is that students will always be encouraged to be as precise as possible, right? The name of the tool is reading for evidence. They really need to pull that evidence from the text. So I might go back to the text here and add, okay, well, they produce, it's going to decrease the methane they produce a lot. I'll click get feedback and I'm told keep revising try to be even more specific what percent of methane is decreased when cows eat seaweed read the highlighted text for ideas so even in the prompting here I have more direction right it's asking me specifically what percent and I've also been told to read the highlighted text and here I'm brought that highlighted section of the text that I need to reread so notice how the activity is scaffolded the first time I uh, didn't include this specificity the feedback did not show me where to look in the text. It's only when I've made this error a second time that now the tool is recognizing, okay, this student is really struggling with getting more specific. We're going to help them. We're gonna provide the scaffold of showing them where to look in the text. So they would reread here, they see that uh, statistic and they can add that and they'll click get feedback and they're told, nice work, you used information from the text to explain how feeding cows seaweed could reduce the impact cow burps have on the environment. Uh, notice, by the way, also I have this counter here and I got to a strong response on the fourth of the five attempts that I have for each of those uh, stems. So they'll always have up to five attempts and they'll always have that counter to let them know where they are. And the reason they don't have unlimited attempts, as you can probably imagine, is that we don't want them to get uh, overly frustrated. We want to move them on if they're really struggling. They'll click next, and now they're brought to the next stem, which is to expand a sentence using but to provide that opposing or contrasting idea. So feeding cow seaweed can reduce the impact cow burps have on the environment, but notice my stem is the same except for that uh, conjunction but. And let's say I write but there is currently not enough seaweed available to feed all of the cows around the world. Sounds pretty good, right? You have the right idea. 
Now rewrite the idea using your own words. Think about other ways you could say the same thing. So as you can see, if you're looking to the left here with what's in yellow, I have plagiarized, right? I have pulled this phrase straight out of the text and the AI is going to catch that and is going to let me know, okay, that's good information. You've used the right evidence, but you need to put it into your own words. And by the way, this um, plagiarism detector will also catch, even if they change just one or two words um, or you know little differences, it will still consider it plagiarism. So they really do have to put things in their own words. I also get a hint here, and this hint explains to me that there's a number of different ways that I can put evidence into my own words, as well as gives, as well as gives me a model for how to do that. So I take a look at this and I decide, okay, I'm just going to kind of start over here and write, there isn't, sorry about that, asparagopsis, I can't believe I spelled that right, okay, seaweed for every how. And if you compare to what's highlighted on the left, you'll see this time I have not plagiarized. I've put this into my own words. And I'll click get feedback. Now, I'm sure my English teachers' fr uh, friends here have noticed that I have used the incorrect version of there and noticed that I am now given feedback about that. Update the bolded word. There is used for locations. There means they are. There is used to show ownership. And so hopefully at this point, I can correct that. And I'm told, nice work, you used information, et cetera. I, I have gotten to a strong response. Now, something I like to highlight here is notice that I didn't get the feedback about my mistake with the word there until my ideas were solid, until my evidence was accurate and, and written in my own words. So we're going to prioritize that in the tool before we give students feedback on more minor things like spelling or grammar mechanics, et cetera. I'll click next. And I'm brought to my last stem, expand the sentence using so to provide a result. Again, same stem, but now with so. And let's say a student writes, feeding cow seaweed can reduce the impact cow burps have on the environment, so we should make more seaweed. Now, this is a totally reasonable response, but what's the problem? Let's see. For this activity, avoid giving your own opinion, feelings, or suggestions. Rewrite your response without the word should and make sure your response only includes ideas from the text. So while this might be a reasonable assertion and while in your classroom you might want students to uh, take a position and, and make claims, what you can tell them is that in this tool we're focusing on only evidence-based writing that pulls evidence from the text. So this isn't in the text, right? It doesn't say what we should do. They need to focus on what is described in the text as a result of the fact that seaweed can reduce uh, the impact of cow burps. So they might delete this and instead focus on what's in the text, which is that companies around the world are growing seaweed. Now, notice that I deliberately misspelled seaweed. Notice that it gets those little red dots. So students do have the ability to correct misspellings before they submit, and you can let them know that they will still see that just as they would in a uh, Word document or a Google document, et cetera. And then they'll click Get Feedback, and we're told, nice work. We've gotten to a strong response. They'll click Done. We have completed the activity. Uh, we're encouraged to feel proud of the work we did today and what this practice will do for us. Um, there's a reminder here that we won't be getting a score or a grade, but that our teacher can see what we've written. And then we're invited to reflect on our work. And this is a really wonderful page to leverage in the classroom because students can see uh, what they've written as their final response for each STEM, as well as what we consider a strong response or an example of a strong response for that STEM. And I'm just gonna pull this out so that, yeah, there we go, so that they're side by side. Um, so again, on the left, they'll see their final response and on the right, some examples of strong responses. So, you know, how can you use this? You could have students work together and discuss which they think is stronger, their own final response or the example ones. Or if your students uh, didn't get to that strong response by that fifth attempt, this is a great place for them to see, well, what was I missing? Where was I off? And reflect on that. 